Welcome to the good, the bad, and the obscure podcast. Hello everybody and welcome to the newest episode of the good, the bad, and the obscure podcast. Today we're going to be talking about a little film called Demons of Paradise from 1987. It was produced by Roger Corman and it is definitely a low budget monster flick. Alright, let's get into this one. This movie starts off with some illegal fishermen docking. After two of them go off to the village, the other two stay back. While loading up some dynamite, one of them throws a lit stick into the water, but they get more than than just some dead fish. They get an ancient creature that they've awakened that leads to them being blown up. Baby big box! Beauty! Give me one, give me one! Hurry up! Hurry up, light it, will you? Come on! What the hell's going on? Right after that, we are introduced to two of our main characters. Annie, who is a herpetologist looking for a new species on the island, and Kiefer, who is a local cop, who moved there just to get more peace and quiet. These two are very much matched up like Mulder and Scully, I would say, from the X-Files. One is very skeptical, one is more believing. What do you want? No jokes, not. You've been hunkered down here for three months, and I can't figure out what you're looking for. New species. I wouldn't mind getting my name in the textbooks. We won't find anything new around here. All us thick skins, we're all pretty well sharp worn. You don't want to acknowledge the legends of Akua, do you? Oh, come on, wake up. You're not serious about that. The beast? That's Hokum. You know, you could do yourself a favor as a cop. What's that? Learn the difference between myth and superstition. Oh, yeah. That is a myth with a capital M, right? Sometimes it contains the truth. And I suppose you want me to keep an open mind? Sorry. Cops are just suspicious cranks. We're naturally skeptical. From there, we quickly get into the creature claiming its first victim, which leads Kiefer on a search to find the old man. Meanwhile, the local resort owner wants to attract more people to resort by exploiting the monster. Things go from bad to worse as more killings happen. More tourists start flooding in, which leads to more deaths. As we head closer to the end of this film, we get a not-so-intense fight between the monster and a helicopter, which is quite hilarious. This film finally comes off, comes to an end, as the monster leads an all-out attack on the resort, which leads to the monster being blown up. That's the end of it. You ever pull a tail off a lizard? Oh boy, this one was very interesting to watch and it's uh, interesting to review too because normally I am a huge fan of monster films. I like the old stuff from the as far back as you can go, especially the stuff from 50s and 60s like the atomic age like monster films. I love them to death, where you get like this really cool looking monster and he wreaks havoc on like a city or a small town or a village or whatever, and usually they're pretty damn good. Now this one, I think it's an interesting movie, it's an interesting concept, but it very much feels just like any other Jaws ripoff that Corman has done, Roger Corman has done, and uh, it's, it's main part that I didn't care for, honestly was how boring the movie movie is. There's just so much filler, it feels like, in it. And there's just scenes that go on way too long, like them right, driving a boat, trying to look around for like for this guy who's missing, or the monster. And it just, it's boring. Um, that's the only real big thing I didn't like about it. Now, the second thing I really didn't like about it was the fact that 
it shows the monster way too quickly. You know, you get a little tease, tease of it f within the first five or six minutes, and then you get even more into it. And it's fine to show some of the monster, but then they just show it all up. And to me, that takes away from the movie. I would have loved to have had them take a little bit longer to show it and it would have been so much more better. But the monster design is a little hokey and a little goofy, but it really makes me think, do they purposely do this? Do they do this like this? Or were they trying to go for something that's really goofy and not to be taken so seriously? Uh, I don't know. Uh, with Corman, it could be. Um, he is like one of the kings of exploitation, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, overall, this movie is all right. Um, I wouldn't recommend it for most people, I would only really recommend it for people who are really just curious about it or who love monster movies. I'd say give it a shot. You're probably not going to like it, honestly. I really didn't care for this one. That's why this is one of the first movies I've, I think I've actually reviewed on here that I would put in the bad category because this movie is bad. Uh, there's not too much redeeming qualities about it besides, like I said, it's I like kind of like the monster, but the monster still is kind of goofy. Uh, the other main characters are pretty typical, you know, a lot of throwaway characters and everything. But overall, like I said, it was all right. I, I don't know if I'll ever watch it again, to be honest. Uh, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and uh, come back for the next one.